Hey, what is up YouTube? It's Terrence and I'm back with another video. Today we're going to be doing some text animation inside of Fusion. What you're seeing on screen, we're going to be creating something like this, but not exactly. Quickly, I'm going to dive in the Fusion page and give you a quick run through of the script. This right here is simply a transparent background. Now we start with one. Here we have uh, the large text. This is the gradient. Here we have the outline, have them merged together. This is the highlight that you see on the screen. And here's a rectangle that I have animating across to animate the highlight, it's just a mask. So if I were to grab the mask right here and move it around, you see how it affects the effect. But over here, we have the small text. It's a similar setup. We have the gradient text. We have the outline. We should merge them together. You can see half the text is showing the gradient and the other half is showing the outline. Just like before, we have a rectangle that is driving the whole thing. If you click it right here, you can see it comes across. It reveals one and it hides the other. That's why I have an instant here. This one is set without invert and this one is inverted. Down here, all we have is the white background. I'm going to be going through the entire thing and showing you guys how you can make this. First, I'm going to throw on a transparent background. This node was created by me. Let's throw in a text node and connect it. On the text, I'm going to type text. Very original. Let's quickly change the font. Something that I like. Let's change the size. There's a modifier inside Fusion that you can apply called the follower. This is what we're going to be using to animate our text. If you right click in the text box and go to follower right here, once we do that, the modifier tab is no longer grayed out. If we click it, you can see that we have a new follower right here. Let's hop over to shading. You may think you're going to be animating on transform, but actually we're going to be doing that on the shading tab. If I should come here and try to use any of the values like position, or the opacity, nothing will work. And the reason is you need a keyframe before you can make any changes. If I add a keyframe to put the position offset, it will create this new path. Just gotta click back the follower, double click, and then I can move the text around. Likewise, if I click opacity, then I can start changing the opacity. So at this point, say at frame 32, I'm gonna go back to frame 10, and I'm gonna bring the text down on the Y axis. Also, I'm going to take the opacity and turn that down to zero. Now, if we scroll through the animation, we have this. Where you get the cool effects is coming to the timing. Here where we have delay, let's go in the center right here, about frame 20. I can move the delay forward and we see that it animates the text like that. You got some options here. You can choose the delay type between each character between the first and last character. That's if you have maybe a lot of text. You can change the order from left to right, right to left, inside out, wherever you want it. If we should play this back, it's not very interesting. And that is because we have a linear animation going on. If I click on the spline right here, let's drag this over, and I turn on the check mark, we can see the keyframes that we have here. So it's just a linear animation from start to finish. You can select everything. Hit S. You know, if you're not seeing everything, you can click this little icon right here to zoom in on the keyframes. And you can hold the control key and zoom out. Now if we hit play, it smooths it out. If you hit T on your keyboard, you can get the ease options up here and you can choose to ease it on either side. You can go say on even a hundred on each and get a really exaggerated animation like that can pull it back a little bit on one side and, and there we go it's a decent animation right there you can also select the keyframes here and I can pull them back to make the animation shorter but sometimes I like doing this on the keyframes tab itself frame everything and here on the text I can hit the drop down and I can select these keyframes and move them back or forward depending on how fast I want it to happen I think that is cool. I can even move them back down to zero. Let's go in and make this look even better than it currently is. Let's go back to modifiers and back to shading. And here at frame 18, you can go on rotation and I'm going to see rotate X. Let's try that. Let's try rotate Z. Yeah, we can, we can work with that. Let's place keyframes on frame 18, then go back to, let's go back to 12 for now you can see what's going on you can have the text lean forward and fall back a bit 
And this animation right here, I'm just gonna grab it and move the keyframes all the way back. Just like before, here I can turn off the keyframes up top and just turn on the X and Z. Select these, ease them, and that before at like 70, and this at about 70, just the same. And now, that's the animation we got. So they start leaning back a little bit and then they just pop up. It's looking pretty nice. Now, if you want to add color to your text, well, you can make changes here on the follower modifier. I recommend going back to tools to make your changes to the color and such. Let's change this from solid to gradient and let's give this a nice gradient. Now, let's say we wanted to do a drop shadow. This is where things can get a bit tricky because if I go to the second element here or the, the third, let's just go to the third and enable it. We get a shadow, but if we go back and play the animation, the shadow stays in place. Now, why is that? That is because it's on the second element. If we're to dive back to modifiers and go to element two right here, I have to go through and recreate all the animations for the shadow itself. Now that's a lot of work and nobody has time for that. So I'm gonna turn this off. For this, the workaround that I've found is duplicating the text as instances. Let's turn the spline and the keyframes off. What I'm gonna do here is grab the text. I'm gonna hit Control C, then Control Shift V, and it creates an instance. That's why we have the green line here. You can also right click and paste instance. Let's grab the instance right here and merge it above our text. Let's turn it on. And here on the instance text, if you wanna make changes to something, you can always right click it and hit D instance, all right? So let's go over here to shading and on the element one, I'm gonna right click here, D instance, right click the gradient, D instance. So now if we were to make changes to the gradient here, it's only gonna make it to one of the text, not everything. Let's make an outline. Let's go to appearance and de-instance this and turn it into an outline. Let's, this is already de-instance, let's make it a solid here on thickness, let's de-instance. And now we got an outline, just like that. Let's just do clean intersections so it doesn't cross over. If you wanna add a drop shadow, you can always go in and make another instance. So let's call this outline, Ooh, copy paste an instance and then merge for the sake of naming let's call this drop shadow you can go in and change that to a drop shadow or if you want to just do it easier you can delete all this and simply add a drop shadow node but you get the idea you can always go in and instead of stacking things inside the modifiers tab or using the different elements in the shading, you can always just stack different nodes. And since they are instances, you can come back to the first one, you can change the text itself and everything will work out. You can go in and change the animation and as long as the, the animation is not the instance, everything will be copied over. Let's make this drop shadow look a little bit better. Let's turn the blur down, turn down the strength and the drop distance a little bit. Let's make this a 90 degree shadow. Let's add a transform node. The text pops up like this and then I'm gonna have it, have it shrink. So it comes up at this point. I'm gonna drop a keyframe on size and then go a few frames forward. I'm gonna have it shrink down. And then let's open up the spline. And if you only want to see what, what you have selected, you can come here and choose show only selected tool. If this is off, it's going to show all the nodes that are that are on your script and that can get pretty annoying. So let's turn this off. Only selected. Now let's frame this. So I'm going to select everything, hit S. And now I'm going to grab this keyframe, hold control and drag it forward to duplicate it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make this go smaller first and then it's going to bounce back. Let's just drag this, hold shift so I can move it in a straight line. Bring it back a little bit. Now let's see what this looks like. All right, so it moves a little bit slow. Let's select everything and move it back. I 
think it needs a little more kick. Let's do the let's do the the ease. Let's kind of ease it out, ease it in a little bit, and let's do this. I think it can even go a little bit faster. So let's drag this over a bit more. There we go. I created another node right here that I call a colored background. It's another macro that I made myself. Let's give it a, a green color. Why not? And let's make this a lighter green. I'm just gonna merge this above it. Green on green, worst idea ever, but it works. Before you guys run off, just give me the watch time here. I'm gonna be showing you how to add the glowing effect. Let's drop a highlight node. I'm gonna connect this after the transform. You can play with the settings here until you get something that works for you. I think I'm gonna go with this. And now to do the animation, all that I did was I grabbed a rectangle, let's drag that in and connect it to the mask on the highlight. I'm gonna drag this over. And I'm gonna hit Control K over here so I can turn off the controls so I can see exactly what I'm doing. And I'm gonna be turning up the soft edge. I think that works. Let's extend this a little bit more. And I'm gonna bring it all the way over. Now, text pops up, goes down, and then on the way back up, I wanna have the glow come across it. I'm gonna select the rectangle and hit center and move forward. I'm gonna drag it all the way across. There we go. Just like before, I'm gonna select everything, hit S, and I'm gonna ease the animation. So about 80 on each side, that should be fine. Now let's play it back. That's way too fast, let's go on keyframe. Just like on the spline tab, you can click the menu right here and show only selected tools. Since I got the rectangle selected, it shows a rectangle. Let's increase the distance. I think that is good. Let's go back to the resolve page, let it cash out. Like I said at the start, I wasn't planning on recreating exactly what I did in the first fusion composition it's right here you can create some amazing text animation don't forget to like and subscribe leave a comment let me know what i should work on next future me here a little bonus for anyone that stuck around to the end of the video in the description there's a link to a text file like this what you can do is copy the contents of the text file go inside an empty fusion composition and then just hit paste this is going to recreate the entire flow, the entire script for the animation that I did. You can simply connect it to your media out and then you can go through and explore the animation. This is your second reminder to leave a like and subscribe. And if you're wondering what to watch next, here's the video that can show you how to speed up DaVinci Resolve.